Well, let's hope today. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Our lovely ladies and happy Valentine's Day to all our dedicated gentlemen. As we gather, there is nothing quite like being an eyewitness, giving a special perspective to share on the event. Peter writes about being on the Mount of Transfiguration as he, James, and John were privileged to have a special vision of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, for when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory. This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. Today, through the words of scripture, we too become eyewitnesses and are given a glimpse of glory in the vision of our transfigured glory. Amen. Mm -hmm.
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For thus said the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel. Therefore the Lord waits to be gracious to you, and therefore he exalts himself to show mercy to you. You shall have a song as in the night when a holy feast is kept. Thank you. 
Bible transgression for the family to come through. And uh, our hearts, you know, let's, let's, let's pray for them and uh, give them the strength to uh, persevere. And uh, we have to accept that God calls us in the transition sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what He does. But it's a glorious moment to be with the Father. That's why we put our prayers in public. That one day we get to be with God in our heart. Uh, it sounds tragic as we go through it, but there's peace for our Lord. And so let's just keep living our prayer. And we're going to do, our sister Marilyn is going to do a Black History Proclamation song. brothers and sisters. I'm going to have to sing this a cappella because they, uh, I don't know where the music is for it, but I feel at this time uh, it's called Come Here Jesus If You Please. And with so many loops and so many family members, all the things going on in the world, I would just like to sing this. And Ask Jesus to come into our life because we really need it more. No. Through the pure and true 
teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn us from all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profane. Lord, in your mercy, may your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and all those who are blind and bound in the devil's kingdom. Bring them to know Christ your Son by faith that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. strengthen us by your Spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of good and the midst of evil things, that our own, own wills may be crucified daily and sacrifice to your good and your gracious will. Into your hands we mercifully commit. Lord, we pray and pray for the church. Lord, we pray for me. Viola, Martin, Rose, Owen, Welcome, Juan, Vicky, Will, Pastor Sleepy, Linda, Chris, William Rose, Debbie Rose. We pray for Ed, Emma, and we pray for our sister Heavy today. We pray, we pray for John Green, Anthony Jr., and Lord Brandon Park, his family. Wrap your arms around them. Pray for Asia, Peter, Haran, Lesson. Lord, we pray for all who are hospitalized, all who are shut in, all those in convalescent homes and assisted living facilities. Be with them. Let them know there is light at the end of the road. Have mercy upon them and lead them on the path to health according to your will. Lord, we celebrate the birthdays of Vivian and Cheryl and Christopher and Pam. Bless all who are celebrating anniversaries. Lord, bless the shared ministries on our campus, all who travel. Bless our military, our college, and our high school, our middle school, and preschool students. Lord, bereavement is, is a tough thing to go through. Bless the families that are going through bereavement at this time. Enable us to be a blessing to those in their time of need. Lord, in your mercy. our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish care, and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Forgive us our sin, as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten our arms. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lead us not into temptation. Oh Lord, but help us by your spirit to subdue our flesh and to turn from the world and its ways and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And lastly, oh Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We trust, oh Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We now have the opportunity to bless the Lord with our offerings.
our possessions more generously to those in need and to support the resurrection ministry through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our celebration of the day is the story behind St. Valentine. Yes, you may be seated. And uh, Cheryl will be reading this reading for us today. Peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Celebration of the day. On February 14th, we commemorate Valentine. I'm going to say Valentine. <laughs> martyr. The word martyr reminds us that Valentine died for confessing his faith in Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. For 1800 years, Valentine's faithful witness has inspired Christian people to faith-filled words and loving deeds. A physician and priest in Rome during the rule of Emperor Claudius, Valentine lived in a time when Christians were harshly persecuted because of their religion. Arrested by Roman authorities, he received a death sentence. Tradition suggests that while Valentine was waiting in prison for his day of execution, he developed a friendship with the young daughter of his jailer. He told the girl about Jesus, and he shared his hope of heaven. On the day of his execution, he left her a note cut into a special shape. Written inside was a message of affection, and encouragement. He signed the letter, Your Valentine, beginning a tradition that has changed and grown through the centuries. Love for Christ and love in Christ shape the actions of Valentine. And on Valentine's Day, it is good to reflect on what that love is like. Let us pray. Lord of love, bless our remembering of saints of the age past, including your St. Valentine. Help us to proclaim your love in our day in word and deed as we look forward to the great reunion with all of the saints in your heavenly kingdom. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue with our Old Testament reading. Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up and struck the water. 
and the water was parted to the one side and to the other, so the two of them could go over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, ask what I should do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, please let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. And he said, you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And as they still went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire, the horses of fire, separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, chariots, the chariots of Israel, and his horsemen, and he saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. is the image of God, for what we proclaim is not ourselves, 
but Jesus Christ is Lord with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord.
a good evening. Eyewitness illness. They would bring us late breaking eyewitness stories of what was going on in the world. Not these bizarre car chases that we see these days, but it was actually news that witnesses witnessed firsthand. And our theme of transfiguration is an eyewitness to Jesus' transfiguration. And what is an eyewitness? An eyewitness is a person who has personally seen something happen so they can give a first-hand description of that. Peter, James, and John. The account of the transfiguration of our Lord does a very nice job of bringing to the end of our season of Epiphany and preparing us for the season of Lent. The season of Epiphany is a time of the revelation of Jesus Christ to the world. The season of Lent is a time of repentance as we prepare to consider the events that surround the suffering and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Transfiguration is a remarkable epiphany of both God and Son and God the Father. At the same time, the transfiguration points us toward the salvation that Jesus will earn for us on the cross. What does it mean to transfigure? In the English translation, it says to undergo a metamorphosis, a complete change of form or appearance into a more beautiful or more spiritual state. When we repent, when we receive the Holy Spirit into our hearts, we are transfigured. We think of Jesus as a great transfiguration. But his death on the cross allowed us to transfigure also. His father came. He said, this is my son. Listen to him. Listen to Jesus Christ. The Lord invited, invited Peter and James and John to a high place on top of the mountain. When they arrived, Jesus changed his appearance. His clothing became radiant, intensely white as no one on earth could reach them. Then Moses and Elijah appeared, the two Old Testament saints representing the law and the prophets. Peter at this time was in shock. He began to ramble with his words because he does not understand what is taking place. That had to be a great sight to see, to be an eyewitness to the glory of God. Amen. That had to be Great transfiguration of parents. We would have been, I would have been shocking on <laughs> But it was for us. It was done on our behalf. Peter goes on to say, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Peter had later admits that he did not know what to say. They was terrified. When we're terrified, we lose our train of thought. We don't know what to do. Lord, help me. He said, I'm right here. The first problem is that Peter wanted to make pretense. He was saying that Jesus and Moses and Elijah were equals. We all know how important Moses and Elijah was. And that the work that they did the work that how God used these men. But they are not God. Jesus is God. As great as Moses and Elijah were, they were still sinful people. Jesus is sinless. Even though Moses and Elijah are important, they are like John the Baptist. They are not even worthy to untie the sandals of Jesus. Peter was under the impression that they would be staying on top of the mountain. But Jesus has already begun to teach them. He had told them earlier that the Son of Man must suffer many things and to be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And after three days, rise again. They didn't understand. The disciples did not understand what Jesus was telling them. It made more sense to Peter to stay on top of the mountain with Moses and Elijah. But Peter, Peter, 
Peter and his lack of knowledge are still trying to deny Jesus the cross. He does not want them to go to the God. He does not understand what is going on. We, like Peter, we often look at the demonstrations of Christ's power as a great expression of his glory. We, too, get overwhelmed as an eyewitness to the glory of God. The miracles, his radiance on the mountaintop. We are all eyewitnesses to the great works of God. We've seen God at work. We rightfully praise him for healing the sick, driving out demons, raising the dead, and so much more. But nevertheless, these are not the ultimate expressions of his glory for us. If Jesus was only a miracle worker and a bright light on the mountain, we would all be a big comfort. The presence of God in all his power is frightening. The first thing God's presence does is make us aware of our sinful nature. We are sinners. We deserve his punishment. We deserve his wrath. His power demonstrates there is nothing we can do to stop the punishment from just crushing all of us. If we all, if all we have is God, and all we have is God and his power, we will be doomed. But the greatest glory of God is not in his power. It is in the weakness of the cross. That is the eyewitness to the glory of God. The transfiguration points us to the cross. In fact, it is the goal of all the epiphanies of Jesus is to point us to the glory of the cross. That's why Jesus came. It does not mean the whole lot when an ordinary man dies on the cross. The Roman government crucified thousands of ordinary people. The epiphanies of Jesus that tells us that Jesus is no ordinary man. This is the man. Jesus is the man. He has the authority to heal diseases, to give sight, to cast out demons. We are eyewitnesses to his glorious works. We have all seen the power and glory of God at work in our lives. When we repent, when we turn our lives from sin and throw our lives on the mercy of God, we go through that moment. We become transfigured. The epiphanies of Jesus Christ teach us that He is not only man, but He is also God. The epiphany season teaches us that when the soldiers crucified Jesus, they were not just nailing a man to the cross, but they were nailing God to the cross. When Jesus suffered on the cross, both God and man suffered. When Jesus died on the cross, both God and man died. When God and man died in the person of Jesus Christ, we were set free. We are our eyewitness to the glory of God. We were set free from the punishment, the shame, the guilt of all our sins. We were set free because with the death of Jesus, we become his brothers and sisters in Christ. He made us children with his heavenly body. He restored our relationship with God. The season of epiphany helps us to see, help us to be an eyewitness that the true glory of God is on the cross. Peter and James and John, they just didn't understand this until they saw it with their own eyes. So they became eyewitnesses. This is why Peter was stumbling and bumbling with his words. While Peter was busy talking, God, the Father, revealed himself as well. A cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. God, the Father, identified Jesus as the God of the Son. The God of the Son. Then he told the disciples, listen. For all the words of the law of Moses and all the words of the prophet, they were ultimately came from Jesus Christ, who is the word of God in the flesh. When he says he is going to Jerusalem to suffer and to die, listen to him. When he says that he will rise on the third day, listen to him. When he says he does all this for you and for me, let us just listen to what God says. Peter, James, and John, they still didn't get it. When he came down from the mountain, 
as an eyewitness, Jesus charged them to tell no one until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. And that, that, that had to be woo. Jesus had to silence them because they still didn't understand that the day would come when they wouldn't understand. That day would come after they saw the soldiers arrest Jesus, take him away. That day would come when they ran away and they abandoned Jesus. The day would come after they knew he was dead. The day would come when they locked themselves behind closed doors because they thought they was the next ones to die. That day came when Jesus stood in the middle of his followers and announced, Peace be with you. That's what God does for us. He casts our sin. He casts our doubts on him. And he still welcomes us with open arms. When Jesus showed them that he was back from the dead, they began to understand. They began to understand the glory of God. Jesus had conquered sin, death, and the power of the devil. He earned our forgiveness. He earned us life and salvation. He did that for all the people. His resurrection meant that the promises he made would come true. His help, his guidance, his faithfulness, our salvation, the wisdom, the peace, and the joy that he bestows upon us, the riches in heaven that are waiting for us. His great strength and power is for us. Are the eyewitnesses. The season of epiphany is about the revelation of Jesus. That revelation teaches us that Jesus is both God and He's both man. Epiphany prepares us for the glory of the cross, the place where God the Son, He fought and He won victory. But that victory is gives us true life within forever. But it is by his word, it is by his spirit, that God enlightens our eyes and our hearts that we may know his glory in our earthly walk. For he continues to reveal himself in scriptures, in the breaking of the bread, and through the transfiguration, through the metamorphosis. He trains our eyes to see him in the total, total majesty and the glory of the crucified body. We are all eyewitnesses. Let us tell of the great works of Jesus does. Let us let people know to receive the Holy Spirit into your heart. You will undergo a metamorphosis. You will be transfigured. You will have the bright light of God the Father talking to you, casting out demons for you, healing you, healing your family. He just says acknowledge you. His father says, listen to my son. Listen to my son. I sent him here for you. To cleanse you of all your sins, all your hatred, all your doubts, all the struggles, all the tribulations, all the stumbling blocks. Cast them upon Jesus. And let us be eyewitnesses to the glory of God, our Father. Amen. 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 And the peace of God which passes all of you and understand. Guard our hearts and minds in Christ's everlasting.
It is true you've been right and secondary, you have to at all times and in all places. Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what has been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In Him, being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, and God and magnify your glorious name. Everywhere 